Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. Today I'm gonna be giving you my first impressions and first look at the EZV bow sight. Now, to be clear, this bow sight does not belong to me. This is actually a friend who offered to let me use it for a while, and I thought, sure, I always enjoy trying new gear and new equipment. I have taken some shots with this sight back when I first got it from him, probably less than a dozen arrows that I've actually shot using this sight. And it's been a while since I shot my bow, so I thought I would get out here today, do a little shooting, and kind of give you uh, my first thoughts and impressions on the EZV sight. Now, if you're not familiar with the sight, let me give you a little bit of background about what this sight is designed to do. And again, if you look at it there, you can see that it literally is a V, as the name implies, the EZV bow sight. It is a V, and as you get further down, that V is formulated, it gets closer and closer to the bottom. Now the whole idea is that you basically frame the vitals of your animal inside that V. This site is designed to be a bow hunter's site. And so uh, the idea is the further away your game animal is, the smaller the vitals are going to appear and the lower down in that V they are going to rest. Now I have to be honest, I come into this extremely skeptical because I know that not all animals are created the same size. So for instance, if you're somebody who's gonna go elk hunting in September and deer hunting in October, an elk and a deer vitals are not the same size. In fact, even all deer do not have the same size vitals. Does do not have the same size vitals as a big buck. It's just not going to be the same. Now I could see how maybe if you were to visualize a basketball or visualize a, a, a particular size circle, that it could work. And I could be wrong. Maybe it's gonna work great with all different size game animals, but uh, I do have a little bit of skepticism about that. However, the interesting thing about this site is that the insert has two different sides. One side actually has uh, tick marks on it. And so if you get the right insert for you, the speed of your bow, you can actually use those tick marks like pins. So I've got this set up with the tick marks facing in where I can see them, and I would have a 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 yard tick mark. Now what that would do is it would give me an open sight picture where all I would have to do is line those tick, mark ups, tick marks up on either side of my bullseye or my target, giving me a perfect elevation and then just centering, which my brain can do automatically between the two tick marks. Now that part in my few shots already, I've discovered I really like because you have an open sight picture straight to whatever you're shooting rather than hiding your target behind the pin. Now one thing I failed to mention is that the EZV bow sight does come with different inserts. This particular one has 260. I know that my bow shoots between 255 and 260, so I grabbed the 260 insert. And rather than using the target system that EZV sends you to try to sight in the EZV, I just went with the one that I knew was close to my speed and I tried to line it up as close to where my old 20 yard pin was as possible. And from the little bit of shooting that I did do, it was right on the money. Again, using this more like a pin sight. So with all of that nonsense out of the way, let's get to do a little bit of shooting and I'll tell you a little bit more about what I think. All right, I'm gonna aim for a three inch dot here on my block target, I'm about 20 yards. All right, I hit a little bit low. I could have dropped my bow arm, like I said, I haven't been uh, shooting in a while, but I hit perfect left and right, just lining those two tick marks up on either side of that circle. Let me take another shot and see at least how I group here. Ooh, that sounded bad. I think I just hit my other arrow. All right, guys, if you had any question about whether the EZV bow sight was accurate, and you know, if you're used to that precision of a pin right on the dot, and whether you're gonna be able to be consistent with it or not, maybe this will help to answer this question because these are the first two arrows I've shot out of my bow in literally a couple of months. And while I did hit low, I hit right beside each other. In fact, I broke the knock off of the first arrow and ripped the fletching off of that first arrow with the second arrow. I, I literally stacked them right on top of each other, almost Robin Hooding those two arrows with an EZV bow sight. Again, just lining those tick, mark, tick marks up on either side of the dot. Let's take a few more shots and see if this was a total fluke. All right, guys, I've stepped back to about 30 yards. I'm gonna take a couple shots here from 30 yards with the EZV sight. Exact same spot as last time, just a little bit low in those block letters. I really like that open sight picture, at least for shooting dots. We'll see about shooting animals at a later time. <laughs> right beside the first one, let's go take a look. All right, so I'm back at 40 yards now. This is as far as I can go at my home range. Okay, um, again, keep in mind I haven't been shooting much. Those results probably have nothing to do with the sight and more to do with me, but uh, let's go take a look anyways. 
Well, everyone, it's been a few days since I was out here shooting with the EZV site. Now, off camera, I took a little bit of time to make some adjustments and get this site hitting right where it needs to be. You saw in the last time I was shooting it that I was hitting low, so I took some time to get that adjusted. I didn't need to change out the insert. All I needed to do was to make a basically universal, the entire site housing needed to go, um, I forget which way it was now, down, I guess. Needed to go down a little bit uh, to bring that grouping up. And so once I did that, that pretty much solved it for all of the distances out to at least 40 yards, which is mostly what I've been shooting so far. So what I want to do today is I want to do some more testing of the Easy V, the, the Vital V, the frame it and claim it, all the things that they claim about this site, and so that you don't need a rangefinder, all that stuff. So what I've done is I've taken a 9-inch styrofoam plate and placed it down here on my block target. That plate is going to represent a, the vitals of a deer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just basically get various yardages in my yard here, shoot an arrow, and see how uh, we can do as far as getting in the center of that plate. Now, because this is my own yard, I shoot here frequently, I have pretty good ideas of where the distances are in my yard. So if I left the tick marks facing me, then that would be an advantage or an unfair advantage for the site in that I would be able to use those marks for reference, even if maybe it didn't frame up perfectly or something like that. So I've turned the um, the insert around so the tick marks are facing out and there are no tick marks facing me and all I'm going to have to go on is framing up this plate in the V. So I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of shots here and find out how it works. Dead center of the plate. Let's uh, take a look and then we'll try some different distances. Okay, so apparently it wasn't perfectly dead center. It was a little bit high, but overall pretty good shot for not knowing the distance and well within the kill zone of a deer. I'm high. I'm significantly high. High again. Very close to the other one, but high again. So this leads me to a question that I've been wondering, and that is what size vitals do you need to use for this to be accurate? And I'm gonna say it's gonna be 10 inches. I bet if this plate was a little bit bigger, I'd be hitting in the middle. But that, is, that brings me to the question that I've always asked is what happens when deer are different sizes or you go after different sized game? Okay, now because I'm hitting high, I'm a little bit nervous about moving any further back than what I was because I'm afraid I'm just gonna end up shooting right over the top of my target. So I moved forward. I'm probably now in the vicinity of 25 to 27 yards. And what I'm gonna try this time is I'm gonna visualizing that the circle is a little bit bigger than what it actually is. So in other words, I'm not going to frame that circle perfectly in the V with no space around it. I'm actually gonna leave a little bit of space around the V, dropping that sight down a little bit and visualizing that the circle is bigger than what it actually is. All right, so here are my three shots from probably 27 or 28 yards. Again, keep in mind that this time I visualized a much larger circle than the nine inch plate. And that definitely seemed to put me right about in the zone. Okay, so with some of my initial fears confirmed that it probably does matter the size of target that you're shooting at and using inside that V, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the plate and go back to my regular target. And I'm just gonna be aiming for the middle here and visualizing in that V how big I think the vitals need to be and framing this up in the middle, again, without the reference point of the tick marks. Let's see how that pans out for me. All right, I'm gonna start back here about 25 yards again. I think it's a good place to start. And I'm gonna just try to frame it up on that target. Now, the one unfair advantage I have is that I do have an idea now, after playing a little bit, of about how the V is gonna look on the size of the target uh, and the shape of the target. So that might be an advantage, maybe. Let's see if it actually works, though. Okay, actually a little bit low now on that last shot, but I do have a little bit of a group there. Let's go take a look. All right, this is my grouping again, probably somewhere around 27 or 25 yards um, and just guessing on the size of the target. Now, I would say all three of those are within the vitals of a deer, but for me, I'm not going to be satisfied if that's the best that I can ever do. I definitely want to be bringing that group a lot tighter together. Okay, let's do one more set of shots. I'm back here close to 40 yards. I'm not at the spot that's 40 yards. I'm probably somewhere around 37 or 38. And uh, I'm gonna do my best to frame it up and I'll probably take two or three shots here and see what happens. Oh, that shot was money. Oh, that one was low. That one was low. Let's go take a look. All right, so as you can see there, the first two shots were in the dot 
and the third shot was the low one there. So those first two shots I'm super happy with. I have no problems with those at all from a distance of almost 40 yards. I've got no concerns there, but that last flyer is certainly something of concern for me. All right guys, so the light is fading. I don't have a whole lot more time to shoot for the evening, but what I wanna do as I finish up for today is flip the insert back around so that the tick marks are facing me. I've used my rangefinder and I'm at a confirmed 30 yards. And I wanna see if I can get a decent group going back to this method, using it more like a pin sight or an open sight picture, pin sight where I have tick marks, I know distances, and see if I can group. If I can't group that way, then maybe what I was just doing was just all me being inconsistent. But if I can get a good group this way, then I'm gonna say that it's hard to judge the gap of that V. So let's take a couple of shots and see what happens. All right, there it is, a pretty good group. Now I have to admit it's a little bit high into the right, but again, for these fading light conditions to stack three of them right on top of each other pretty much from 30 yards, I really can't complain about that group at all. Well guys, I was gonna give you my, well, hello. There's a massive skunk just came out over there. Well guys, I was gonna give you my conclusion to this bow sight, uh, but it's July 3rd here in central Pennsylvania, and there are a bunch of rednecks who wanna put off fireworks while I wanna make this video. It does have tick marks or engraved marks there. So I'm gonna have to get back with you on uh, this conclusion. Also, a massive skunk just walked out of my neighbor's yard, so I think it's time for me to head inside. Well y'all, it's July 5th, and I'm out here to give you my conclusions again. And of course, as soon as I get the camera out, the neighbor starts mowing the yard. These are not long-term reviews. I guess she's not done yet. <laughs> well, y'all, I don't even want to tell you how many times I've tried to record this conclusion to the video and it's just failed, but hopefully we can get through it this time and I can give you my final thoughts on this Easy V site. Before I get into it, I want to mention very clearly here that these are not long-term conclusions. These are my short-term first impressions from shooting in my backyard, both what you've seen on camera and a little bit off camera as well. But this is not after months of using it consistently, after shooting 3D with it, hunting with it. That's not what this is. And I think some of the uh, conclusions I come to here could possibly change uh, with a lot of use and getting used to the site. But again, these are my initial impressions on the site. What I want to start by communicating to you here is the build quality of the site and some things that maybe you didn't see uh, in the actual shooting part of this video. First of all, the, the build construction is great. It's a metal construction, basically all of it's metal except the insert here. And I think it's, it's a simple design. It's something that you can drag into the woods and not worry about. You don't have to worry about a stick getting in your sight housing and breaking off one of your ten thousandths of an inch pins. Um, it's just, you're just not gonna have to worry about those kind of things. I think it's a durable site. You can belly crawl through the mud and the weeds, and it's gonna hold up to that, I'm pretty certain. There are a couple things, though, that I'm not a fan of. They're not deal breakers, but I just wanna point out to you. And one of them is the way you actually adjust windage and elevation on this site. So it's a simple design, but coming from a site that has micro adjust, uh, this design kind of drives me a little bit crazy. There's a bolt right here that you loosen to adjust the elevation of the site. And it doesn't move straight up and down, it moves by pivoting um, back here on this circle basically in the front part of the site housing pivot. Now, there are two issues with that that I have. The first is, the, once you loosen the screw, it can pivot basically as far as it wants if you loosen the screw too far. There are engraved markings on here where you can try to get it precise, but I had a really hard time getting it precise. What I found is even once I positioned it, I loosened the screw just a little bit to where it wouldn't slide around, I'd position it and then I'd go to tight the, tighten the screw back down, it would actually want to rotate as I tightened the screw. Again, not a deal breaker, you gotta hold it tight, kind of position it, figure out where it needs to be so it'll even rotate into place. And I was able to get it. And again, this is something that once you get the bow sighted in, unless you're doing a lot of different changes to your bow, most of us are gonna sight it in and leave it and be done. So it's just a little hassle on that first initial sighting in process. It's not a deal breaker, it's a simple design, it's a good design, just not what I'm used to and I, pr I prefer what I'm used to, to be honest. Um, the other problem with, is that because it rotates and doesn't just slide straight up and down on a rail, this actually uh, makes the whole sight housing rotate front to back here. Now that can be fixed by loosening this screw on the front and this sight housing is on a rod and you can basically just pivot that back to straight. One thing you have to be aware of though is that would be the same way that you would adjust the elevation by sliding that rod in and out. And so when you go to adjust one or the other, you just have to make sure that you're not adjusting 
uh, say the pivot when you want to be adjusting the windage or the windage when you just want to be adjusting the pivot. So another thing I wanted to mention to you is the insert system. Now, I don't have a problem with the insert system. I realize that it's an integral part of the way this site functions. That's fine, but I wanted to communicate my experience, and that is that the tolerances are extremely tight. Now, tight tolerances are a good thing. Um, that means there's some, some amazing engineering done uh, to this site. But what that means is it's incredibly difficult to get in and out of the site housing because you're basically taking two circles of just perfect dimensions that are going inside of each other, and you have to push that insert out perfectly straight. There are also two indentions uh, on the, or two holes on the site housing with tabs on the insert that come out into that little hole and that kind of snap it into place. During the filming of this video, I wanted to try to flip it around and I was trying to get that site housing out. I couldn't get it out, I couldn't get it out, so I was putting some pressure on the tab through the hole and I actually bent the insert and in the process of all that, I actually cracked the insert as well. Now, I wanted to point out that this is something that once you get the right insert in there, you leave it in there, I don't think you're gonna have any problems with it. And for me, the only problem came when I started trying to flip between the tick marks in and the tick marks out, put it in and out, in and out, for the purpose of this video. Where you might run into problems is if you don't know your bow speed and you're trying to change a lot of different uh, inserts to find out which one is right for your bow, that could be a bit of a frustration. Again, it's one of those things that once it's in, and you just are set to go, you're never gonna have to really mess with it and it's not gonna be a problem. It's just getting it set up that's gonna be a bit of a frustration. So now, let's talk about the actual shooting of this site and how effective it is. For me, I have to tell you, I've been blown away by how effective this site has been at using it with tick marks, with known distances, with my rangefinder, and having that open sight picture. I have really, really enjoyed that open sight picture. Uh, you know, if you've got target panic, I can see how this site would help you. It's not putting that little tiny pin on a little tiny dot on the target and, and wobbling all over that dot and trying to get it perfectly in the center. There's something really relaxing to my brain about having that open sight picture, uh, make, lining the tick marks up in elevation and then just letting my brain center the target in between those two dots. There's something really relaxing and enjoyable about that kind of shooting and I've been really impressed. If I decide to keep this on for this year's hunting season, that is definitely the way that I'll be using the site. Now, I came into this video and told you I was very skeptical about using it as a range-finding bow site, and after this testing, I remain extremely skeptical. Um, it's very clear to me that the math just does not work uh, for this site to work with various size vitals. It was designed to work with a certain size target, a certain size disc or circle or ball or vitals, whatever you wanna say, and it simply isn't going to work if you don't have that size target or can't visualize that size target. For me, so far, I've not been able to visualize it consistently. Yes, sometimes I can, sometimes I can't, and I just haven't been happy with the results that I've gotten. Now, I think for me, I could probably get consistent results by learning how that sight picture looks on my block target, but I don't think that would transfer over into a hunting scenario when now I no longer have my block target. And I think it would be incredibly difficult to simply just visualize the right size circle all the time in all lighting conditions in open timber, in more brushy timber, from an elevated position, from a, a seated position on the ground, whatever it is. I think judging that size disc just in your imagination is gonna be incredibly, incredibly difficult. Now, I know uh, that there are a lot of guys out there who claim that it works amazing and they've killed deer with it and it works great for them. That's great. But for me, my results that I've gotten here in the backyard just have not convinced me. I watched a buddy of mine use this site at a 3D course. I know his abilities and this, and when he was shooting this site, he was not shooting anywhere close to his abilities on that 3D course, even not if we're judging score, just looking at good solid kill shots. Again, this could be something that would change with a lot of practice, but for me, my impressions right now is use it as an open pin site. It's amazing, the site picture's great, but I simply would not trust it. In that easy V, just frame it and claim it, doesn't matter, you can shoot any kind of animal you want, and it's gonna come out great. I'm not really buying that. Now, one other thing I wanna point out is that this site is amazing in low light. This particular one has, I think it's a glow in the dark tape around the inside of the housing, and if I remember correctly, I think this might be the sapphire insert. I'm not sure about that, but it really is super easy to see in low light. And because you have that open sight picture, you can see right through it and see your target in low light environment. You don't have a glowing pin that's actually blocking your target, making it difficult to see your target. So from that perspective, again, Great in low light, great for people with target panic, great open sight picture. I love all of those things, but I'm far from being sold 
on it as a range finding bow sight where you don't need a range finder, just frame up the animal and shoot. So I hope this video has helped you. If you're interested in buying the EZV bow sight, if you are, I'll leave some links down in the description. Let me know what you think of this sight. If you've tried it and your results have been different than mine, if I'm doing something wrong, let me know down in the comments. And until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.